Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about performance. And, and performance doesn't just mean sailing fast. It doesn't mean just being a race boat. Why, why do our clients buy a performance cruising catamaran? And what does it mean? Well, it really means that they can sail when the wind's light. Mm -hmm. When others are motoring, you're sailing. They're sailing. Performance. Um, it starts with uh, really our, well, it starts with this clever man designing some exceptional hold forms that will deliver the boat speed we need. But it also means about uh, getting the weight out of the boat. So he can design really good uh, hull, hull, what we call canoe bodies. In designing the boat and building the boat, we've got to make these boats strong, robust, and safe, and stiff. And, and, and stiffness and strength actually really go a long way in delivering your performance. Um, you can't have uh, a polyester boat. It, it's just too flexible, it's too soft. So all our boats, both the HH44 and the OC44, are infused. They're an infused foam sandwich composite structure using epoxy resin. And you know, this resin is far superior to, to any polyester or vinyl ester resin in terms of its strength and stiffness. The reinforcing of the boats, what makes the boats so rigid, so stiff, is their, their carbon reinforcement. We have massive, all the bulkheads, all the beams, all the frames, uh, everything that is basically the skeleton of the boat is in carbon fiber with epoxy, all infused. And then uh, the plating on the, on the outside of the hull uh, and the deck, well, that's actually done with, with e-glass. Um, again, though, epoxy infused, foam construction, and that's just for a, some cost saving, but also because there's actually no gain. There's no gain in the performance. But there is a lot of carbon in the shell still in high load areas, such as where the dagger boards and the, the rudders attached chain to the plates, hull. Chain plates, of course. Chain plates, yeah. um, and, and all the structures taped together it's not um, there's minimal amounts of glue yeah that's an important uh, feature actually the fact that all the bulkheads are bonded in using carbon uh, taping we call it taping or secondary bonding again with epoxy uh, far superior than any glue flange that could ever imagine so um, very important part of the longevity I mean these boats come with a five-year hull warranty and yeah, they're going to be sailing around quite happily in the same form in 50 years or 100 years. Uh, your polyester boats just don't do that. They're, they're not at all comparable. So a big tick for your resale value and, and years of uh, trouble-free sailing. But I want to talk also about the, another very important part of the performance. Uh, it comes from the uh, immensely deep dagger boards. And, and these are curved so that uh, they provide some lift to take out the weight of the boat out. And you can talk a little bit about that as a percentage, I guess, James. I mean, uh, well, yeah, um, the faster you go, the, the more lift they're going to generate. And due to their curved nature, you're actually, yeah, a vertical component of lift is generated and you can reduce the displacement of the boat uh, effectively. That's being pushed through the water by about a ton, but that varies depending on how fast you're going. Right. A ton less displacement. I mean, we do these. The boat. We do these same curved boards on all our boats, and the cool thing is, uh, a twenty-ton boat or a ten-ton boat that are both sailing at fifteen knots. Obviously, the ten-ton boat is going to benefit more from curved boards than the bigger boat. So, uh, the curved boards are, are, are really a good performance tick for this boat. I want to talk about those boards because. All our, like all our HH boats, uh, these boats are designed to happily fly a hull. And, and not only just fly a hull, but a fly a hull in a, in, a, in a reef scenario where the center of effort of the sails, which we've talked about, it, is lower, and therefore there's more writing moment, and therefore there's more load on the boards. 
Um, most other daggerboard boats will, will stop you doing that because they'll break and there'll be something in the owner's manual saying, you know, <laughs> don't fly a hull in with it when you get a, uh, in particular, uh, apparent wind strengths. But um, here, you, you're unlimited. You can put your, what we call the pedal to the metal and just floor it and uh, nothing's gonna break. The daggerboards, we build them from carbon uh, pre -preg. So this is where rolls of uh, uh, carbon fiber without any uh, stitching to hold it together. It's just pure fibers in one direction. Then we actually test these boards. Every single board we build, we put it, we've got an immense testing jig and we bend the board to twice its uh, working load, twice what you as a sailor will ever be able to apply to that board in terms of sailing load, mm. just to make sure yeah, they're 100%. So yeah, speaking of tough, um, next I'll talk about the rudders, and those are built in a similar fashion to the dagger boards. I mean, firstly start with your normal cruising boats, you know, our competitors, they'll have a, what, a hollow aluminium stock or stainless if that's a yeah, heavy if, cruising boat if yeah. it's a maybe a narrow uh racier profile they might have a solid stainless stock um or then you go to the other end of the scale we have race boats that have hollow carbon fiber stocks which is the lightest method but it's yeah not very cruiser friendly a little bit more vulnerable to damage i mean these sticky outputs they get broken off if you're not careful so we build our rudder stocks out of solid carbon fiber um no no voids, no foam, no, they're, they're solid um, and they'll last as long as the boat. Like. Yeah, that's <laughs> strong. <laughs> and, um, and then the, in terms of the rudder shapes themselves, obviously uh, they're foils and they're helping lift you to windward when you're sailing upwind. And so typically our HH catamarans have a, a deeper draft rudder than you'll find on, on other cruising boats. Um, on the 44, we have paired that back a little bit more and skewed towards the cruising side. So the draft, when your board is raised, um, the board is just a fraction deeper than the rudders and that's at 1.1 meters, which I think is about 3.6 feet. So it's right. still- Just under four feet. Yeah, incredible cruising capability. Shallow draft, but, yeah. and I think that's important to, to the, the board, which is immensely more stronger than the rudder itself, um, is still protruding down just a fraction deeper than the rudder. So it's, it's at, acting as protection. And it is also protecting the prop shaft and the folding propellers. Right, from debris in the water. A log, right. for example, gets pushed aside by the board before it does damage to the propeller or, or the rudder. Yeah. Mm. So to analyze all of these great features and see exactly how fast this boat's gonna go, we worked with um, K&D, who are sailing yacht performance specialists and they did all the analysis, the VPPs, which I'm sure you can look at now. But VPP? Velocity Prediction Program. Right. And they use the, the, the latest, most state-of-the-art techniques. So we can, with good faith, tell our clients just how fast this boat's going to go in any given wind strength and any given wind angle. Right. And, and we can use that tool as well to make design decisions, you know, is our dagger board big enough? Are our rudders big enough? Do we yeah. need more sail area? Uh, when, when's the best time to reef? We can get a lot of that information from the Velocity Prediction Program. And then our long-term design partners, Morelli Melvin, um, they've had some great feedback for this, great input, and they're even uh, engineering the um, immense structures of the dagger boards. You know, we, we trust that to them. They've done it for all our boats. And the, the launch rod. And, and the Londron and Crossbeam Engineering as well. Yeah, yeah. Rally Melvin does that for us. Um, and then we've worked with both Doyle Sales and North Sales to really develop a large sail wardrobe for the HH44. So right. you can choose what you want depending on your cruising needs. Exactly, and we're talking from overlap in Genoa, uh, self tack and stay saw, Storm jibs, right? Yeah, of course. These are the engines of the boat, so mm. we only work with these two sailmakers. We consider them the best, right? And it was great to work with them because it was a it was a back and forth between them and then our spa manufacturer, Master in Sweden, who builds our carbon masts. So it was it was a really a back and forth, adjusting the you know getting the stays right, getting the spreaders in the right position. How does that affect the sail? 
going through the design and spiral. And the loads too. The sub maker, he, he, he gives us the load. What, how much is going to be on that sheet? Right. How strong does the mast have to be? How strong does the tack point need to be? Yeah. The, the clue. Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously to harness all this power, we use a, a carbon fiber mast. Right. So why a carbon mast? I mean, a carbon mast is, can be engineered to be lighter and stronger. It's just a, a, a far superior material than aluminium. Uh, which means we can design the mast uh, within the weight limits that we have to handle all the power of the boat and fly a hull without, and still have uh, factors of, of safety over and above whole fly conditions. Right. Whereas with an aluminium mast, of course, um, which we do of course have in our OC44, we have to put in the sailing instructions that the, the mast is basically when apparent wind speed limited. So when you get to a certain wind speed, you, you've got to reef the boat, you've got to change head sails. You know? right. This is typical of 95% of the world's uh, cruising boats. Right. Whereas with the, with the carbon mast, we can just, uh, yeah, pedal to metal, isn't it? That kind of leads us into talking about our next point is how do you control all this power? And so, uh, we've not only designed a boat that sails fast, but is, is easy to handle, uh, single-handed or short-handed, um, and that's done from our two aft helm stations. And now all the lines are led back there, under deck, and they pop out just in front of the winches. And, and when I mean all the lines, I mean the furling lines, the reefing lines, the halyards, the sheets, the daggerboard controls. I can see that, you know, you, you look at the helm station out here, and we, we've really put a lot of thought into and consideration into into this and, and as James says every single line is is under the deck so there's nothing on deck to trip up there's nothing fouling the solar we've got clean decks yeah and then uh, to make it even easier we've put the traveler on a, a dedicated line driver winch on the cabin top so that's push button control um, our davit lines so that they're not crossing the aft cockpit and making it you know, messy cluttered. and cluttered. Yeah. Um, they're on its own dedicated reel winch under deck. Electric, of course. Electric push button control. And then we have an option for owners that want to further simplify things is push button controls for raising and lowering the dagger boards. Right. So again, technology, we're using it. Um, always cautious about weight, right? And actually, I just want to go back to the, the, the spars on the boat, because the other sticky out bit, of course, is sticking out the front, our carbon longeron. And, and this, if you've seen our previous HH boats, is, is a, a sculptured masterpiece. We've actually integrated the longeron, the crossbeam, uh, the anchor box, uh, twin pelican strikers, and a carbon martingale strap to handle the, the load of the forestay. And it's all one integrated monocoque, basically. Yeah. Uh, and it just looks so cool. It's a beautiful piece of work on the front of the boat. Right. And then a great benefit of carbon spars up high and out forward is that those are the exact places where you don't want weight on the boat. So that reduces pitching and, and makes the boat more comfortable to sail. So performance uh, doesn't stop with the deck gear and the sails and, and what you can see on the outside. We also spend a huge amount of time working on all the details on the inside of the boat, down to the, the pipes, the plumbing, the wiring, stripping weight out wherever we can, simplifying the systems, making them robust and easy to use. And a great example of that is, I believe this is probably the first production boat in the world that has 48 volt electric winches, windlasses, it's like a standard right. feature. All our big draw DC systems. Yeah. We're using our Eco Drive battery bank to power, power them. Right. Yeah. And so that means all your wire sizes are, are greatly reduced. And that's a tremendous way to save. Cool. Right. Well, I think we've kind of covered all the big things about performance. Um, that's it for this session. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us once again. Uh, please do push that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. And um, reach out to us if you want to build this groundbreaking boat with us. We'd love to partner with you and build your dream boat. Thank you. Bye-bye. To request more information about our groundbreaking HH44, click here. To watch the next video in the series, click here. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more updates.